Have you been blessed? When you wake up in the morning, you forget food. There's a way God bless you, you forget food. The joy will be too much that you don't know that you have not eaten. That is something that will happen to someone right now. Enjoying the favor of God, that's the message. Part three. You will end this year well. Yeah. So that crown that year with our goodness and our power shall drop what? Fatness. May fat things begin to fall on your path. Yeah. You are saying amen like somebody with a special. Jesus speaks, I came that they may have and enjoy life. Life is for enjoyment. It's not for endearment. He didn't come to for you to endure. He came for you to what? Enjoy. That's the Amplified Classic of John 10, 10, the B path. And have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. May you enjoy life from today. Amen. I say may you enjoy life from today. Amen. Suffering struggling, pains has ended in your life. Amen. Favor is the heritage of every child of God. Jesus came on earth and enjoyed favor. Enjoyed what? Everywhere Jesus went, favor followed him. In Luke chapter 2 verse 52, Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Enjoyed favor. You can't work so hard to get everything. No, that's not Christianity. Christianity is that no matter how rich you are, things you should come by favor. Solomon was wealthy, but Queen of Sheba came to favor him. I decree unusual favor to accompany you. Amen. God's favor is a cure for man's struggles. A day of favor of God is more than a lifetime of labor. Israel labored for 4, 30 years, and one day came, God just favored them. Turned their captivity in one day. In 24 hours from this prophetic words, I'm declaring somebody will encounter a strange favor. In the name of Jesus. Have you been at the crossroad? And all of a sudden, you think things are not going well, then God just step in. I mean, like that kind of life. Where you think everything is going down and then God just step in and turn it around. He said, when the Lord turn, when, not if, so I want to six verse one. When the Lord, it is a if the Lord, that means it's certain. When the Lord turned again, the captivity of Israel were like them. That what? You know, there's a way something happened, it'll be like a dream to you. Oh, I went to a church to preach years ago, long ago. And I was preaching in the 90 service of favor like this. And a young man sat in front who was looking for a driver's job of 6,000 naira at that time. And I said, God, we turn your captivity. He said, Amen. You know, there's a way young people who are born again say amen. And he shouted the amen from his heart. Everybody heard him. Not knowing that the guy was to be a driver. The driver's job had not even started. And then, after that time, somebody who was related to them outside the country remembered only him. And flew all the way from overseas down to Nigeria to look for him alone. Saw him, life story, gave him a 7 series BMW and a Pajoro Jeep. And that time gave him seven figures of money. This young man will drive on the road, life story in Port Harcourt, Nigeria, stop at the center of the road and start laughing. And it was like a dream to him. The man was to be a driver, he's not driving seven streets BMW. He will stop. They will blow, beep, beep, beep. He will not remember this on the road. It was like a dream. As I'm talking to you, it's overseas. It's no longer in Nigeria. The next blessing coming to you will be like a dream. will favor you and it will look like a dream to you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Have you gotten so blessed and you wake up and say, am I dreaming? Is this thing real? You know, that's the way God bless you. You say, is this thing real? May God who said in his word, he turned the captivity of Zion. We are like them. Like what? Then our mouth was filled with laughter. That scripture be fulfilled in someone who says, amen in the name of Jesus. <laughs> The next blessing will be like a dream to your life. In the name of Jesus.
Jesus. He said, turn again our captivity. Have you been blessed? When you wake up in the morning, you forget food. There's a way God bless you, you forget food. The joy will be too much that you don't know that you have not eaten. That is something that will happen to someone right now. When Israel was living in Egypt, that was the kind of blessing they got. He said in Exodus 3, verse 21, he said, and I'll bless these people with favor. With what? <laughs> and I'll give these people favor on the side of the Egyptians that when it shall come to pass, that when they go, they shall not go empty. Just imagine slaves living with the wealth of Egypt. You know, it was a dream to them. They would say, are we the slaves living with the wealth of Egypt? They left Egypt with the entire economy of Egypt. They were telling me a story of a young man, one of the wealthiest men in this country. He's among the first 10 wealthiest men in this country. They said he was selling diesel. Then all of a sudden, he's a believer, a staunch believer, born again. He has one of the best jets. They were just telling me a story. And then I was telling me a story. He was selling what? Diesel. Today, in oil and gas, is among the first three, if not the first. This guy is rich. He's rich. He's rich. <laughs> One day, he gave a man of God six billion naira. <laughs> Are you not expecting that to happen? Receive it in the name of Jesus. Six what? Not million, billion. The man of God said, when he saw the money, he said, oh boy. What would you do? The man of God was the one prophesied to his life, as I'm prophesying now to you. And he came back, he said, sir, he said, what? He said, oh boy, hold on. The man said, leave me on television. He said, hold on, hold on. He said, what is this? What is it? Billion. Calm down, calm down. <laughs> he said, hold first. Hold on. Now I'm speaking to someone. On this day of favor, your testimony will beat that one. In the name of Jesus. Don't mind where you are. I'm speaking as a man sent by God. You will be the next that will hit the target. In the name of Jesus. Favor can catapult you from the pit to the palace. It adds color and beauty to your Christian living. But you don't wait for favor. You can turn favor on. You can turn what? Favor on. And I said how to provoke God's favor. Number one, I said by a new bath. You have to be born again. Number two, be at the center of God's word for your life. I've taught that one. Number three, I said be a promoter of the kingdom. Number four, I said be obedient to God's instruction. All these ones I've said. And then number five, I said possess godly character. And number six, solve problems. And then number seven, so seeds of favor. That's what I got number seven for this service. If you want favor, so seeds of what? You must also sow favor in the life of others. He said in Galatians 6, 7, he said, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sow, that shall he also reap. Matthew 7, 12. Matthew 7, 12. The Bible said, therefore all things whatsoever you would, you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and all the prophets. When you bless and favor others, God will favor you too. If you want favor, do it in the life of others. I read something in John Avacini's book. One of his books. A woman was bitter and complaining bitterly that nobody ever favors her. Elderly woman, she was so bitter. So nobody favors her. That she doesn't know uh, people. Then the man of God looked at her and asked her. Somebody has everywhere there's food. What are you talking about? People are bringing food to her. He said, nobody gives me money. Then the man asked her, were you giving money before? He said, no, I don't believe in giving money. She believes in giving food. She doesn't believe in giving money. Some people give her food, but they don't give her money. Every favor you want, you to show it in the life of another person. If you want people to give you clothes, in the little way you are, give somebody clothes. If you want money, your level at your level, give somebody money. Any kind of favor you want, sow it into the life of somebody else. Are you hearing me? If you want food, give somebody. I don't have. You are something your favor. 
The first decay. Things are things are hard. The first decay. The first decay. You better find out what the first decay. The first decay is things are hard. There's somebody close to me who's elder brother. Once before they meet him, he say first decay. They call, they call him bro. First decay. Things are hard. <laughs> before they talk, he said things are hard. That thing So they looked at him and they gave him a nickname, brother. Things, brother. If he so when they call him, they say, brother, if it's okay, that means things are hard. Therefore, like that, before you come, you complain. When we were in school, we had a very stingy young man. So one day, he wanted to eat bread, and he, did, he was stingy to a fault. So he, he saw that students were coming to his school, and he said, this bread no go do me. <laughs> so all the students say, we no go chop your bread, you eat alone. Uh, because he saw students coming, and you know, in school, you must share your own. So a social comes and says, this person is too small, no go do me. So people know that it's stingy nature. He doesn't want to shout with anybody. Mm. So there are some of people who are if a sick that things are things are hard. Things not hard for you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number eight, if you want favor, be a worker. Be a what? Avoid idleness. Idleness is the roadblock to the floor of favor. God will not have any channel to bless you when you are doing nothing. So whatever you do, I shall what? Prosper, Psalm 1 verse 3. So if you are doing nothing, there will be no channel for God to bless you with favor. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So be a worker. Be a what? Be a worker. The soul of the sluggard desired and had nothing. Proverbs 13 verse 4. But the soul of the diligent shall be made fast. So make sure you have something you are doing for God to create as a channel to favor you. If you are doing nothing, there will be no channel to do what? To favor you. Shout hallelujah. Number nine, have a touch of excellence. Have a touch of... If you want favor, have a touch of... Excellence. Excellence sets you apart to be favored. Autograph every work you do with a touch of excellence. Daniel chapter 6, verse 3. Daniel was preferred above the president and princess because an excellence was in him. Anything, and the king set him, what? Thought to set him above all the realms. When you have an excellent spirit, it attracts favor. Do everything with a touch of. Check anybody who does any job for you and they do it very well. You, you find out that you don't know why you give them money. Is that true? Somebody, maybe you are. You are a designer, and then I had to get some clothes from Abuja. One of our pastors here gave me some clothes as gift. When I saw them, I said, what? You mean they sold these things in Nigeria here? Because every native designer, they measure you, but they sold different things. Have you ever had native designers? Most times, they will measure you. You take your measurement to then they sold things that you now wonder, what, what is this essence of taking the tape? So this guy sold. Without seeing me, without measuring me, he sold my clothes. So I told Pastor Samson, I said, ah, you mean you got his clothes without? He said, yes. That the man just looked at me and was able to sew my clothes. I said, tell him to supply me. I'll pay. Are you going to say now? That is, he didn't take my measurement. He just looked at me and just, perfect. But the packaging was something else. When I saw the packaging, I said, wow. In Nigeria here, Abuja, he packaged them in such a way that it was so neat. I said, this man has beaten everybody who's sewing for me. A packaging is something else. He packaged them as if he was sending them. You think it's that native? He fold them, wrap them, then put them in a very special package case. I said, Wow. Tell me how that can't tell her will miss me. <laughs> but some, they will measure you, measure you. With, I say, Sir, move your hand, fold your hand. <laughs> <laughs> they now sold it. Now wonder whether they took your measurement. So anything you do, to grab with the touch of, you are an architect, don't plaster a house like a, like a draft man. You know, if you go to Lagos, they build houses in Lagos, but Lagos will be very angry. Lagos has the finest houses and the worst houses in Nigeria. Lagos. They will plaster a house. You, think, you know, in the village, have you ever seen mud houses? Mud houses are never smooth. No matter how they do, mud house, you see it they go like this. That's a Lagos, they build house. They will plaster the house. Now say, what, what is this? You see a fine house from afar. When you come near it, you just get angry. Finishing of a house matters a lot. I hate you not giving a house a torch of excellence. Now listen, what makes a building different from the other? The same block. The same block. No different. Just the touch of, okay, it's the same cement, the same sand. But one has a touch of excellence. One will just plaster any hair, plaster any hair, plaster any hair, plaster. Then it will go like this, like a, something that is just waving. You know some plaster, they'll plaster. Build, you know, they'll plaster like this. You go, go like this. They look at you, you go to the bed, they go, they go, no, no. And it says an architect, it's an, no, 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 no. Have a touch of, 
scrape it. You're a laundry man. After you iron and the button is off, put the button. Next time the person comes, say, oh boy, you mean that button that was missing? You put it, I dash you. You won't beg for it. Favor just comes. Are you getting me? Anything you are doing, in your office, they give you something to write. Don't carry paper. Then oil is the end of the paper. No, now. Palm oil you use, or the pancake you use on your face. You not take the pancake to touch the paper. No. The white paper they give you, you not use pancake to rub part of the paper. No, now. You pancake on your face, you should be careful not to touch the... That's an official paper. You not pancake the show on top of the paper. No. And you carry this okay? The man now see your fingerprint with pancake. He said, no, 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 no. What is this? He says, I, I, I mistakenly touched but No. Even in church, they have a touch of what? Don't come on the altar. Even as a choir person, you come. Now, lift your hands, everybody. He start preaching. You came to sing. Did you come to preach? He said, today, as you're going to sing, God will bless you. Amen. Say amen. You came to sing. You didn't come to preach. If you want to preach, then come to preach. Do you know many musicians leave singing to preaching? Oh, you've not seen some? They give them five minutes. They take two minutes to preach. They say, this, this song is going to bless you. Somebody shout, yes. He came to a single. Lift your hands. Before we keep our hands down. Have a touch of... Stay tuned. David Abume will be right back. An ending prosperity is God's plan for every believer. You are a God created to dominate and live in prosperity. David Ibiomie introduces prosperity series. I came from abject poverty and broke poverty by knowledge. If you're sinking in life, watch what you're thinking. You don't overcome poverty on the outside, you overcome poverty from the inside. Prosperity of the righteous. Prosperity is a function of your mental capacity. Your mental capacity triggers and determines your level of wealth. Principles of covenant wealth. Principles are not subject to the vicissitudes of nations or national economy. Living without financial pressures. Order, planning, and investments are relevant to breaking the hold of financial hardship. How to come out of debt. Contentment brings great gain. Discipline yourself and become a lender and not a borrower. Get these books at the Knowledge Center of Salvation Ministries and in leading bookstores worldwide. You can call plus 234-703-894-5714 plus 234-809-521-6466 or visit www.smhos.org forward slash store. They worship together regularly at the temple each day. Met in small groups in homes for communion and shared meals with great joy and thankfulness. Acts 2, 4-6 In your daily pursuit of a fulfilling life, you need the support of a spiritual family. A heaven where you can enjoy spiritual comfort. A brook where you can be refreshed with God's word and a military backup for fellow soldiers in Christ. Enjoy these and much more in the Cell Fellowship, designed as a close-knit setting for your personal revival, growth, and blessings. It exists in three structures, the Home Cell Fellowship, which is suited for everyone, the Corporate Cell Fellowship, which is convenient for corporate offices and organizations, and the Unique Cell Fellowship, which is made for students. No matter your preference, there is a place for you. Locate the nearest Cell Fellowship Center to you and begin reaping the benefits today. Welcome to Our Salvation with David Ibiomi. Anything you're doing, you want to serve your husband food, serve him with a touch of... Don't carry the plate uncovered and drop there. Nah. The table is not clean. Make your hand like this. You see dust. Nah, nah, nah. Nah. Have a touch of... Even in your appearance, have a touch of what? Don't appear casually when you're going for interview. You are going for... Do you know why bankers they say they should wear a suit? You know the reason? Because they are trusting their whole finance into their hands. Otherwise, they would have asked them to wear jeans. 
Why is that they tell bankers all over the world to dress well? They are saying, the whole economy, we are putting it in my hand. I trust you. Have you seen any doctor who go to office with this? No. 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 You won't see a doctor. On real official. Have you seen anybody that will wear jeans? Have you seen any lawyer? Okay, say so you can dress anyhow. Why do those lawyers dress anyhow? Have you seen any lawyer with that hair before? You can't go to court with that kind of hair. They will ask you, are you, are you okay with your hair? Have you seen one? They can keep bears. Have you seen one with that hair, Rastafelia hair? And they call you to buy with that hair. When you're going to court, you dress well. You can't wear t-shirt to court. Lawyers, can you wear t-shirt with jeans to court? Why? You are free to dress any hand according to you. Touch of what? Excellence. Young men, that they say dressing does not mean you dress anyhow. The way you dress determines how they address you. Even women, mind the way you dress. Don't dress open everywhere to this point. Yo, that place your shoe is for your husband. It's not for the whole public. Okay, say I have fine legs. If nakedness is what will make men marry you, then all prostitutes should have married. Because they are virtually naked on the road. Did they marry them? So who won't marry you? In fact, it's when you cover yourself well. Because it's not a public property. <laughs> How can you dress? You all of your breasts won't come out. They, 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 they said they, they chase me. Before they don't go chase you. I don't know go chase you. When you dress, you whole breasts they show. He said, anyway, I'm going to chase me up and down. Then they chase you. The way you, you have already caused the confusion in the church. <laughs> touch of what? Even your dressing, you have a touch of. Uh, don't dress like that. <sighs> some of you, the way you dress, Abuja own is madness. Some of you, it's meant for them to just be naked to enter aircraft. It's meant for them to be completely naked. I said, what is this? Is it because of our Buddha free money? You see young guests, don't dress as, don't be in this church and dress like that. Dress your tumor from here to here, no cloth. Yeah. <laughs> Which responsibilities are you seeing there? Those ones, they dress to sing music and they are only musicians. You a believer. From here to here, no cloth. You now cover here. Here to here, they show. Say, guy. No responsible man will marry you. Like, like they will sleep with you, but they will not marry you. Have you seen anybody who married that again? <laughs> when the man wants to marry, go look for one better girl because I have leave that one. That one, no go marry her. That one go spoil the house. Look at me. <laughs> men don't marry such women. That, that, should be, that should make you be careful. When men want to marry, they leave those people. They go and marry. They say, see this man, he just wastes all my time. He don't get about me. He, the way you appear. He's afraid because his own friend will chase you back. So he just do. <laughs> Number 10. <laughs> Stop dressing. Anyhow. Number 10, always declare words of favor. Always declare words of favor. Life is driven by words, and the mouth is a compass of life. So water your life with your mouth. Morning you wake up, say, today, favor is my portion. As I walk out, favor shall follow me wherever I go. Proverbs 12, verse 14. A man shall be satisfied with the good by the fruit of his mouth. We shall have whatever he wants, say it. Constantly speak favor over your life and family. As you wake up in the morning and digest your blood, as we step out today, favor is our portion. So I hear. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Speak favor over your life. As I get to the office, favor is my portion. Then the favor will follow you. Then number 11, maintain a lifestyle of joy. Maintain a lifestyle of what? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Philippians 4 4. Rejoice evermore. First Philippians 5 16. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and Philippians 4, 4. Joy is the serious business of heaven. C.S. Lewis said. In Acts chapter 2, 47, the Bible says, praising God and having favor with all people. So the more you are joyful, the more favor with all people. It won't just maintain a joyful life. Favor with, say, praising God and what having favor with what? All people. So every time you are joyful, everybody, look anybody who smiles. Do you know they are very attractive to people? Keep your face serious. Nobody will be attracted to you. Don't say, Nassau, Nassau, God created me. God does not create you to be frowning like that. Keep your face like that. If somebody won't fight you. How are you? How are you? 
The day that sit in the level shall laugh. The Almighty God laughs. How can you keep your face like that? Serious. He said, Me, that's I like my face. No, 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 no. Nah. Nobody will favor you with that kind of face. Business will hear me. If you will not laugh, don't put business. Ask me why. I will not enter a shop where you're frowning and I buy something with my money for what? You want to buy first me? <laughs> One of my sons here, his father was very rich, he couldn't man. I won't tell you. He's looking at me, only two of us know. So somebody came to him and wanted him for his property. He said, want to buy first for my property? <laughs> so if he want to buy first me to buy your, for your shop, how can I enter your shop and you're frowning? And I will now buy something from you. I'll walk out of your shop. All business people, some of you, it's not the devil warning you, it's your face. Someone enter your shop. Uh, I want to buy something. He said, which one? <laughs> and you are telling me who is a customer with that face to come and personalize you. For what? If you don't want to sell, then no problem. Are you in business mode? Nobody will favor you with a frowning face. If you are going to a business, you must put a smile. You must put a what? A smile. My wife and I went for a program and the MC wore white glasses long ago. And he said, now all of you be smile. My wife looked at me. <laughs> so what kind of English is this? He said, now be smile. And he was very serious, so hold the microphone. He said, now nah. I said, be smile. My wife looked at me again. He said, what kind of English is this one? You know, there's a way somebody with dress and wear glasses, you will leave what you're looking at. Wore <laughs> these white glasses and then wore one kind of tie. He said, no, now nah, be smile. My wife looked at me. I mean, to look at her. I said, this, we have come now. <laughs> So, in case you are opening a business, what do you do? Don't, don't speak that kind of English. <laughs> don't speak that kind of English. You're your children. Don't say, Mommy, what is this, my? Pray this prayer after me. Wherever you are, say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept thee as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from there to save me. Now, with my mouth, I declare you the Lord over my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name. If this message blessed your life, or you need someone to pray with you, feel free to call us on plus 234-811-470-9570 or plus 234 We are here to listen and support you. Follow David Ibiomi online for daily prophecies and wisdom quotes for living via Instagram at David underscore Ibiomi, Twitter at David Ibiomi, Facebook at David Ibiomi. You can also listen and subscribe to the David Ibiomi podcast on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Anchor FM, Google Podcast, and much more. God bless you. Join us next time on Hour of Salvation with David Iliomi. This message was brought to you by Salvation Ministries.